With more than 4,000 art pieces in IUP's collection, only a very small percentage were created by female artists. With such an expansive collection, most of these pieces lack a permanent residence and can be found in the basement of Iker Hall, only seen by the public on rare occasions. Graduate students Jen and Ashley thought of the idea for their exhibit, XX, Women Making Art History, while working closely with that collection in storage. It feels like we're in a morgue <laughs> because it, it's so much, um, what's the word? There's so much history here just sitting in this room. Why not show some pieces that have never been shown before? Women have had a struggle with having their art recognized um, from the beginning of art. Um, I think one issue has always been, in the beginning particularly, uh, some pieces or some art that women would do traditionally, such as you would see here in this exhibit with Native American um, baskets, often ceramics. Um, those type of things at one time in the art world were considered craft and not high art. A lot of the pieces that stood out for us were artwork that really embraced kind of multimedia techniques. So we were really drawn to every process that was in the collection that we had to choose from, um, which is really expansive. There's printmaking, all types of printmaking. There's relief etching, lithograph, uh, we have oil painting, acrylic painting, basketry, pottery, textiles, sculpture, terracotta and aluminum cast. So we really wanted a diverse show, a diverse exhibit to emphasize the skill levels that all artists can have. The pieces stood out to me uh, because they are unique, they don't have a feminine look. They look like any other artist would have made them. So I thought that that emphasized how women are just artists, not women artists. There's not a particular look for the kind of art that a woman makes. There have been a lot of uh, women painters, uh, women uh, sculptors uh, throughout history, but it's always been a struggle for them to be recognized. Like with any artist, all of our collective experiences affect how we work and what we make and what we pursue. So what's really great about this show is that each piece is unique to itself, just like it's unique to each artist. Out of all the artists in the collection, some have received greater recognition for their work. Mary Cassatt was seen as a pioneer in the Impressionist movement. She was not judged by her gender, rather by her artistic value. These women used their various styles to become more prominent within the art world. Mary Cassatt's role in the Impressionist movement was very influential. Um, the Impressionist movement was really the start of modern art. She went over to the Paris School of Art and was amongst Claude Monet and Edgar Degas, who was her mentor, and she was one of them, and they are all very prominent in art history. And she was, the, you know, the big female that was with amongst all these males. She wasn't the only woman in the Impressionist movement, because Bert Marceau was also um, a female artist, and actually, um, art critics at the time didn't like Impressionism and they thought it was unsuitable or just um, lazy for men to paint that way, but they thought it's the style matched the nature of women in that it was kind of flighty and gestural. Women weren't allowed to even work from the live figure until 1893 at the Royal Academy in London. And even then, the figure had to be draped because they didn't think it was appropriate 
for women to see, to study live nude people and they thought it was also dangerous for some reason and um, so because they didn't have skills in anatomy they weren't able to paint like the epitome of um, art which was history painting so they were kind of relegated to landscapes and still lives, usually still lives. It was also thought that it took genius to be a great painter which it does, but uh, it was thought that women didn't uh, women uh, did not possess that genius at one time. And of course, as we know, genius doesn't have a gender or a culture. Genius is genius. The pottery pieces come from. Um, Toshiko Takeizu, who is an American artist. Um, she makes, she, well, sometimes they're big forms, but she combines hand building and wheel, wheel building. And she also applies her glazes in a very abstract, natural way. Um, and she's also influenced by the ceramics that they use in Japanese tea ceremonies, because sometimes they will show the marks of the manufacturer, or um, it shows the hands of the person who made it. An outsider artist is an artist who has not had academic or professional training in their career as an artist. Some of the outside artists that we have are Ruby C. Williams, who's one of my favorites. Um, she's a folk artist from Florida and she sells her artwork at her produce stand that's located on her farm in uh, Florida. And uh, she sees her produce stand and her artwork as a way to minister to people. The great thing about outsider art is that it again emphasizes all forms of art making, that you don't have to be in academia or have professional training to be a successful or good artist. You can come from all types of backgrounds, come from multiple cultures, and you'll still be able to embrace your artistic drive. So I hope people um, are just kind of have a new experience. I just want them to have a novel experience with artwork that they probably haven't seen before. It's really great to enter an exhibit that has uh, this type of diversity because it allows the viewer to experience and appreciate art for what it is and all of its forms. You had them bringing all these women, uh, you know, to life finally, and giving them the credit that they're due, and um, you know, they're brought to the public, the awareness finally. So, and it's still a struggle. I think it's still a struggle. Uh, a lot, a lot of women are still very, very unrepresented. Let's say in a lot of uh, major international museums, you know, throughout the world. But uh, of course, as I said, there's been a large effort in the last, you know, 30 years to bring this history of art and the large part of it that women have always been involved in, have always played a part in. Uh, it's starting, you know, to be introduced and has started to come to the public, which it deserves to be. XX Women Making Art History was hosted in Sutton Hall on Monday, May 23rd through June 11th. Graduate art students and Sutton Hall will continue to host art galleries in the future. For more information, please refer to our website at http forward slash www.iup.edu slash museum. One of the hardest things to do while shooting Female Art Museum was actually to come up with interesting ideas to shoot the paintings and sculptures they have there. And uh, also the lighting was an issue because you can't control it and the sun keeps coming in and out and clouds also make that an issue because each shot is going to look different than the previous one. 
One of the new experiences I got was while filming the Female Art Museum. Uh, during that process, we went on site to the museum and filmed a lot of the art pieces. And uh, one of the bigger challenges we had to come across was most of the uh, art were behind glass cases, which made it really hard to film without getting the camera or the camera operator in the picture itself. The interviews for the female art exhibit were hard to do because you had to come up with three different uh, interviews in three different settings just to make it interesting because it would be re repetitive if you do all of them in the same setting. So we had to do that with the help of Logan and Adam. One of the issues we had also was they were mowing the lawns in NIUB and when we were taking the interviews, there was so much background noise that we had to stop every five minutes just to wait for, the, for them to finish and then continue our uh, filming. 